This video will show how to fix meshing errors on a simple model and the best practice to avoid meshing errors. These principles are also applicable to RCB and PTD. Modeling and issues specific to RCB and PTD will be covered in separate videos. Now, meshing errors occur when the software is unable to generate the finite element mesh as per the software's inbuilt rules to the geometry that has been modeled. Meshing errors are an issue because the results will not be accurate at that particular point. Meshing errors can, if there's too many of them, cause flooded areas to be generated incorrectly and in some extreme cases cause floor thicknesses and pressures to be scrambled. In answering our users' support calls, we found the root cause of all analysis errors, so basically the software not being able to run, is meshing errors caused by messy geometry. Often we see users trying to get the model made quickly to get the results out as fast as possible, but the end result is a messy model that does not run. So they end up spending more time trying to get a messy model running than it would have taken to clean up the model initially to a level that would not produce any errors. In this video we'll clean up the meshing errors present in this particular model. I will talk through in detail step by step what I'm doing but also what I'm thinking about when I'm cleaning up the model. Now we'll go ahead and basically start to try to mesh straight away. So this file was imported from CAD and we have an error message instantly telling us to shift the model in the XY. So as mentioned in previous videos the model must be in positive coordinates if we select elements we can see that it is very far in the positive x coordinates so we've got one kilometer in the positive x now this is too far and the program is complaining why if it's too far in the positive coordinates there may be numerical instability during the meshing during the analysis so we need to shift it back closer to the origin how we do this we go to the edit tab move and auto shift so if we zoom extents, hovering the mouse cursor on the bottom left hand corner of the model and we can see the XY coordinates on the bottom left hand side of the screen. So this is now at an XY coordinate that the program likes. Before we round off, we'll go ahead and start meshing straight away. So we'll try one meter mesh size. We receive an accuracy warning, which we expect because we haven't rounded off. And we should see some meshing errors occur. So the meshing error being the program was not able to generate the finite element mesh based on its predefined rules without creating errors. So that's the red dots. The area warning, uh, what this is, again, just a warning, but the program performs a check to see if the sum of the finite element triangles within a geometry line match the area of the geometry line. If there's a difference, then the program returns a warning. So generally, this is an indication of messy geometry. If the geometry is cleaned up, we can basically, we should see this warning disappear. Now, zooming into the various areas where we have errors, so straight away here it's obvious we have meshing errors because the angle of the wall and the geometry line don't match. Same with here, there's a small gap between the wall and the, in the perpendicular geometry line. But these ones are a bit trickier. So here the essentially the mesh is just failing because of the intricacy of the surrounding geometry line. So if we press escape to redraw or just visually clear the mesh, there's nothing right in that particular point that should be causing an error, but shift E to show the mesh again. Because of the intricacy of the surrounding geometry, it's returning a meshing error at this point. So not ideal, should be cleaned up to get rid of that error. Pressing tilde to zoom extents, so tilde being the button next to the one key. Now, many users who basically don't like cleaning up meshing errors or um, you know, for whatever reason they just want to get the model running as quickly as possible, will try to make the mesh size finer to get this model running with no errors. So let's try that. 
making the mesh finer, the thinking, the incorrect thinking is that you will have finer elements that we're going to be able to squeeze into these smaller gaps and get rid of your errors. However, this comes at the cost of increased runtime. So not just a linear increase, but an exponential increase in runtime of the software. And in our case, it hasn't actually decreased the total number of errors. It, another undesirable effect of the having finer mesh is that it will hide potential errors as well. So if we hit exit, we still see that we have all of the meshing errors here along this particular slab edge. But if we zoom into this area, it's actually it's gotten rid of the error at this wall, but basically now we're locked into using this 0.5 meter mesh. So, you know, if we're in the early stages of design, having a mesh this fine is not a good idea. We've unnecessarily increased the runtime. So, increase increasing the mesh size, sorry, decreasing the mesh size to reduce the number of meshing errors is a bad idea because of the great increase in the runtime. So we'll hit escape to redraw um, and we'll, st we'll go ahead and start cleaning up the errors. So firstly what we want to do is to round off our geometry to a suitable level of accuracy. So to do that we go to tools, round off and in this case I'll choose the nearest two decimal places or 10 millimeters. We're selecting the elements again to the nearest 10 mil, everything has been rounded off. Pressing F5, the shortcut for mesh, I choose the 2 meter mesh size and we see we have a few meshing errors. Um, now the reason why I've chosen the 2 meter mesh size is obviously it runs quicker but the thinking is if I can clean up all of the meshing errors with the 2 meter mesh size it should be absolutely fine with the smaller mesh sizes and we'll probably be meshing and remeshing a few times during the cleaning operation anyway so hitting exit we still have errors in the same locations as before now we'll zoom in and start cleaning them up so hit escape to redraw and we'll start cleaning up this balcony area so we'll align everything to this right hand corner um, straighten everything up, get rid of these meshing errors caused by this change in angle. So we'll select either of these walls, hover over the node, right click, set as master, go to the other end of the selected wall, hover over the node, right click and align to the Y. For this line segment I can either hover over its node, right click, align to the Y to pull its end up, or for the balcony segment, I can just hover over the line segment itself and align Y. But to do that first, I need to get rid of this excess node, hover over the internal segment of the geometry line, right click and align to the Y. So now the angle of all of these segments match. This particular area is at an angle. Again, won't cause any issues, but it will be nicer if it's in the orthogonal. So we hover over the node, right click, set as master, hover over the next node, right click and align to the Y. Now zooming into this area, zooming in and out, we can see there's a slight angle in this geometry line at the balcony. Why this is, is it was introduced by the rounding process. So for the degree of accuracy we chose, this particular node rounded off to the X coordinate 96.03 and this one to 96.04. Now there are no there are no other elements intersecting basically this segment, so it will be fine if we mesh, it won't cause any issues, but it's just something to keep in the back of our mind, especially when modeling in the diagonal. If we were to choose an even higher degree of accuracy, so for example to the nearest one millimeter or three decimal places, uh, again this could, this effect could be more pronounced. So again won't cause any issues but just for completeness I will make it orthogonal just by manually changing its coordinate. So pressing escape to clear. Now because we've edited the 
geometry, we have no mesh, but if I press the shortcut Shift E to show the mesh, the program will still remember where the previous errors were. Zooming into this area, we will go ahead and fix up this balcony. So we will use the wall as a um, as a reference point. So the walls are the critical elements, especially in RCB, so we don't want to shift them around too much. Select the wall, hover over the node, right click, set as master. Select the geometry line, hover the cursor over the internal segment, not the node, right click, align Y to make that entire segment straight. And for completeness, we should have both of these walls at the same length. So because this line is already lined up to the orthogonal, we will hover over the node, right click, extend with mouse and clip, drag past the intersection line and left click. So this area should now be fixed. Going across, escape to redraw, shift E to show the mesh. We'll fix up this area. What these yellow triangles are, are basically uh, sharp elements. So they're not meshing errors, but the program is sort of, it's getting close to the limit of what it can handle in terms of accuracy for this particular mesh size. So they won't stop the analysis from running and they may as well, they may disappear if we use a smaller mesh. But if we clean up the geometry, we'll probably be able to get rid of them so selecting the perimeter line, we'll have a look at this edge first. Because this geometry line segment is sitting on the inside face of the wall, it currently doesn't have any support. Now that isn't as intended, we want this edge to have support. So we'll pull it back to the center line of the wall. So here we select the wall itself. Rather than hovering the mouse over the node, we hover it basically between the nodes of this wall align element we right click and we set as master. Selecting the perimeter geometry line, making sure the mouse hovers over an internal segment of the geometry line and not a node, we right click and we align to the X. So this way we move that entire segment rather than one node at a time. Escape to clear the master. We will now flatten this segment so we will set hover over the node on the left here, set as master, and then go to the node that we want to align, right click and we align to the Y. Panning across, escape to clear the master, shift E to show the mesh. We have one closed node error here, escape to clear the mesh, and that is because the rounding has shifted these various geometry lines in an undesirable location. So, select the wall, right click, set as master, hover over the geometry line, select the geometry line, hover over the segment, and right click, align to the X. So that should fix the meshing error, but if we press Shift E again, we'll get rid of these sharp elements as well. Why the sharp elements are there? Most likely what has happened is in CAD the the slab edge was drawn on the inside face of the wall. The rounding caused it to be shifted slightly. For simplicity, we will move this geometry line to the center line of the wall. So basically where the various elements will be meshed to. So how we do that, we go to the Home tab, make sure our snap settings are snapped to corner, and then we drag and drop to the corner of the walls. So this will now fix any of the sharp elements. Oh, we, sna we snapped it a bit too far. There we go. That will get rid of the sharp elements and there will be no meshing errors. So pressing the tilde key or pressing zoom extents, sh hit shift E again to show the mesh. The next area that we need to fix up is here. So again, as per the area on the right, the errors are caused by the difference in the angle between the wall and the geometry line. So we select the wall, set a point as a master, and then just align everything to the Y. So align Y, select the geometry line, align Y, and select the balcony, align Y. Similarly here, 
it looks like this segment on the balcony is in the orthogonal so we'll set that as a master select the line below and align Y shift E again to show the mesh zooming into this area the balcony has been rounded off in a slightly undesirable way so we'll select the perimeter line no, probably better to select the wall because we like having the walls as masters right click set as master and we'll just align everything to the Y so sorry to the X right click align X right click align X again hovering the mouse over the internal segments not the nodes so that entire line segment gets shifted shift E again to show the mesh and there's a similar error occurring here so there's a slight offset in that node and the center line of the wall so we select the wall right click set as master select the geometry line right click and align to the X so here because we have two geometry lines overlapping each other we have to fix two separate set of lines ideally we should only use one where one is needed but because it's in the orthogonal it shouldn't be too difficult to align both so visually we can't see that there are two geometry lines here it's only via selecting that we see it one way to confirm if there are geometry lines below it is to select one line right click and look in its context menu so by the very fact that we see this select line behind means that there's a line underneath it so if we press that it selects the geometry line underneath and again similarly we can do select line geometry line 13 so ideally we should only use one where one is needed but we'll we'll show how to quickly get rid of them in just a moment so quickly reviewing we fixed up all of these errors so we shouldn't see them once we remesh but we'll just zoom in and talk about this diagonal area now the rounding process rounded off the geometry lines as wall and the walls as we know and the program wasn't returning any meshing errors here you know, maybe we were just lucky maybe the mesh isn't showing any meshing errors for whatever reason but my experience tells me that if you round off any diagonal elements when they're drawn in a manner such as this there will be issues the reason why there will be issues is that the angle of this geometry line segment does not match the angle of the wall after rounding off so we might be lucky we they might match exactly hence why no errors but experience tells me that there'll always be some the rounding will always cause some slight deviation in angles which will cause errors so how we fix it basically we should get rid of these excess geometry lines first just to make this area simpler to work with so we didn't do it in the orthogonal directions because it was very easy to work with overlapping geometry lines but for diagonal areas best practice get rid of them so how we do this we select the line that we want to uh, trim down or get rid of segments of we right click it select explode we then go to the relevant segments and we've just hit delete on the keyboard to delete those excess segments so select the perimeter select the geometry line itself that we just exploded so we now only have one line where one is needed again checking if there's anything else underneath it select the perimeter right click over the segment again nothing shows underneath so there's no select line behind option so that's fine to force the program to make this geometry line segment match the angle of the wall underneath we insert a node so we right click insert node we drag and drop with snap to corner on and similarly on the other side we insert a node drag and drop and if we really want to confirm that this is all coming at the correct location we can just double check the coordinates so selecting this one 7.79 11.21 7.79 11.21 11 coordinates of the wall selecting the perimeter 
and using the cursor keys just to navigate through its properties. We see a red circle, 7.79, 11.21. And then flicking through to the other side, 12.396.61, 12.396.61. So all of those coordinates are good. Yeah, this manually checking of the coordinates not necessary. If there were errors there, then it would come up during meshing. But just for my peace of mind, I had a quick look. So we will hit F5 to mesh again, choosing 2 meter mesh size. And we now have no meshing errors. A few sharp elements which we're not too fussed about, but all of the meshing errors are gone. So this particular model is now cleaned up. We can start inputting our thicknesses, our loading, and then start looking at our results. So the topic of the next video will talk about how to clean up a much more complex model, basically a model with a larger percentage of its geometry in the diagonal. Uh, the, one of the key concepts that will be discussed in that video is using one geometry line where one geometry line is needed. We saw in this diagonal area how we removed excess geometry lines. I'll quickly show you now how to automatically do this. So all of these areas around the balconies we see we have the perimeter but we have these excess lines here that aren't needed. So if we go to tools we can quickly see for the entire floor where the overlapping geometry lines are. So if we press that, the program should draw red circles wherever there is a double overlap geometry line. How we can automatically delete them, we select this perimeter master geometry line, delete overlapping geometry lines, and select within selected geometry line. So it found 11 geometry lines that were overlapped, exploded them. In exploding them, it created many more geometry lines, and then 28 of those were deleted. So if we zoom into these areas, we have the perimeter. We have these geometry lines defining the balcony. But if we right click, we can see there's no option to select a line under, meaning there is now only one geometry line here. So the model has become essentially much lighter, much simpler to work with, and there are no meshing errors. So we will we'll continue discussing these topics in the next video, but basically this model now is ready to, uh, ready to continue to design with. So again, covering the main concepts. So when there, there's meshing errors, ideally we should round off always to one or two decimal places. We should never use smaller mesh size to try to clean up meshing errors. So one, that will increase runtime. Two, that will um, potentially hide any errors. And then the other, the other key concept we discussed is to only use one geometry line where one geometry line is needed. This concludes this video. Thank you for watching.